In this chapter, we're going to be looking at covering tracks overview, disabling, auditing, and clearing your event log, hiding files inside of NTFS alternate data streams. There's also countermeasures for this. We have steganography tools, which we can hide files with the steganography tools. We can shred evidence, look at anonymizing tools, as well as Tor. Now, when you think from a hacker's perspective, a hacker would wish to disable auditing because auditing is going to record the activities that the hacker has done. They may consider clearing what's in the log, such as a security log, for example, in Windows. They could consider hiding information within the NTFS file system by using alternate data streams where they're basically they're hiding a file within a file. We can hide data inside of images, which we think of as steganography. We can try to get rid of or shred files that could help give us clues to what the hacker might be doing. Now there are rootkits, and inside rootkits they're known for hiding processes. There's quite a stealthy nature when you think of rootkits, and a rootkit is a method of getting a backdoor to a system. Now you're going to see a lot of emphasis on the Windows operating system covering these topics. Now looking at auditing, within the Windows system we could use a Windows Resource Kit tool called Audit Poll. And it's a command line tool that allows us to disable the auditing, effectively turning it off, as well as re-enabling the auditing if we wish to. And if the hacker can disable the auditing, then we would not be able to record the activities that are occurring, and therefore hiding this information from anybody trying to, to study what has occurred, any sort of forensics that would need to be done would be more difficult because they've actually disabled the recording of the hacker's activity and all their mischief. So that's a, an interesting tool. It's best to run this tool locally on the victim box, the one that you've compromised. And of course, within the Windows world, the really important log is called security. And we have application log, and that's very interesting, dealing with applications, any sort of issues with applications running. System log can give us information on as a system boots up and shuts down, any services that may have failed to load or start. And there is the really important security log because this is most likely what they may wish to get rid of because activities could be recorded here. Unfortunately, with the traditional methods of just going in there and clearing the log, there will be one record stating that it was cleared. So that's evidence right there. Another option would be able to use a tool such as EL Save, which would accomplish the same goal but not actually leave any sort of record behind. Another interesting thing hackers can do is to try to hide information through using the NTFS file system, which allows you to do something called NTFS alternate data streams. And this slide actually kind of gives you the big picture we were actually, this is Windows NT, it was a little older version of Windows, but it could be Windows just as well. System 32 calculator, and you could redirect a program into a file that appears to have a, uh, like two files in one, file.txt colon program.exe. And we're actually taking that calculator program and basically redirecting it into this double file, this NTFS alternate data stream. And with this, when you normally would look you would, at the directory listing, you would not see the program.exe, but you would see the file.txt, which would still would not possess the calculator program. Someone would need to know that, that, that this was there to even for it to occur to them. Or they could use tools that would help you see or reveal NTFS alternate data streams. So with this, it will append the Windows Calculator pro program onto the file.txt, and then if you were actually going to run the program, you could do syntax as you see here, where you start and you point to the file.txt colon program.exe. Now Windows itself cannot detect any sort of NTFS alternate data streams. One indicator might be the reduction in disk space, or you could use tools that will detect NTFS alternate data streams, but again, it's not built into Windows. 
So what we could do is a countermeasure. We could scan our system for alternate data streams on a regular basis using tools such as LADS and streams. And there's quite a few tools here that are you know, something you can use to accomplish your goals. Now this is an interesting idea, although it's a little harder to find nowadays. If you did find files that had alternate data streams as part of them, if you were to copy these files to a file system such as file allocation table, such as a FAT32 system of the older Windows versions, it does not comprehend NTFS alternate data streams. Therefore, it would drop the content. It would not be able to keep it because NTFS alternate data streams only works on an NTFS formatted drive. In a modern day, as in you know most Windows systems we run into, this FAT partitions are really hard to find. But of course, this could be done if you, you do take the time to format a drive that way. Most of them are going to be NTFS. And of course, you could use other tool sets. It's just a proof of concept tool here where the tool could actually reveal the hidden content, such as the Stream Explorer. And I'll show you a little bit more with this. Okay. All right, looking at VMware. And I did a little demo earlier, minimize this. And I typed some of this already. And just this is not with an executable, with a text file. And with this one, we started out, just made a little folder called test and typed in the statement echo, just a plain text file and directed it into a file called sample.txt. And then I, from the command line, type out the sample.txt, and you can see it just simply is just a plain text file, just like it looks. And then I'm basically putting in something I'm sneaking in, a little message, you can't see me, and redirecting that into what appears to be a double file, it's NTFS alternate data streams. So basically my secret message here, you can't see me, goes into sample.txt colon secret.txt. Now, under normal tool sets, that really would not be readable. Let me get another, actually, another command prompt here. I'm going to do some of this. A little bit smaller. Okay, so we would have already done the echo, you can't see me. And of course, and then I could take the contents of sample.txt and redirect them into secret.txt. And the catch is when I do a directory listing, actually, let me get in the right folder, we'll find that there are two files. And if I go and I try to just type them out normal like, type sample.txt, sample, a type secret.txt, you will not see that secret message earlier that basically you can't see me. Now yet if I took the time and did a notepad and pointed to that pathing because I know I created this. Oops. So, click. Then I can see my secret message. But by normal means this would not be viewable. If I simply try to say type uh, something like the sample.txt colon secret.txt, it's not going to understand it. But you can see that with Notepad, it was actually revealed. It truly does exist. There is additional content. You can't see me hidden inside of this, what appears to be a file, a colon, a file. And that's a little bit about the NTFS alternate data streams. Now another method of hiding information is called steganography. And with steganography, there's lots and lots of tools that you can use, but you're hiding information within a carrier file. You can hide information within pictures, basically images. It could also be sound, even disk. And I guess the most popular is most likely pictures. And many times we'll put text within pictures. You can also, with some steganography tools, put pictures within pictures. And it's not like you can stare at the picture and go, oh yes, I see there's hidden content. It's not really obvious. And realize there is no encryption going on with steganography. You're basically just hiding information within some sort of carrier file. And lots and lots of tools are available when it comes to steganography. 
Okay. Looking at some of this, let's see what we have here. Here's a book from Amazon, Data Hiding, Exposing Concealed Data in Multimedia. And just kind of looking at the idea of, you know, what you can read about when it comes to data hiding. And they go off in the usual encryption. But here you are, steganography, hiding in PDFs and executables, different ways to insert this information and get it into some more advanced steganography, hiding in HTML even, and some tool sets, and then just keeps going with all these ways of hiding. And as far as some popular steganography tools, I was looking at this site, and these are kind of interesting, and showing you that you can hide files in, in different forms. I mean, you can hide it in text files, image, document, video, audio, even emails. And showing just a few examples here of someone that they happen to mention, the S tools, with S tools, hiding information in your typical graphics formats, BMP, GIF, WAVE. Maybe working with Word and Excel and doing some hiding within that format, document steganography. Hiding file behind the audio. And most of the tools don't do all of these things. They mostly do text within pictures, but you can find some steganography tools that will hide this information. Hiding behind video even. Our secret. And then sending hidden text in email and uh, some sort of email spam mimic. So there's really a lot of options with this. And as far as steganography goes beyond just some of the, the basic tools, realize that there are detection tools also, like Stag Detect down here. And also realize without tools to detect the content, it's very unlikely you would recognize that there was any steganography going on to begin with. More of Covering tracks, we think of shredding files that are left behind. There's tool sets like this that, you know, the, the idea is to give you the peace of mind that anything you've done, any sort of internet surfing, any sort of history you have, recent activity, would basically be removed. Okay? Plus, of course, here they're showing that it's not like it only comes in forms of Windows. I mean, you could boot off of a live CD. A lot of times that would be a Linux CD. And that way there's no evidence because you booted off the CD and you didn't do anything off the hard drive. It was just basically stored in RAM and when the computer is rebooted or shut off, it forgets. So these are just some options for leaving no trace. And of course, some other just proof of concept, not that these are the only tools out there. These are just examples of how there are tool sets that allow us to try to become more anonymous, maybe anonymous with our web surfing, for example. A popular method such as this, we're using secure VPN, so we can surf, surf the internet with uh, the, the feeling of being more anonymous and not everything being tracked. And just here's more anonymizing, anonymous, anonymizer, anonymous surfing. Now, before we look at Tor, there, you can actually subscribe to a service if you would like to be anonymous and go through a VPN, which you can connect to different countries. I mean, Canada being one of them, and I think Germany and many different other places. And this is just a proof of concept, again, of a VPN that can go with you, a VPN in a box for a very low rate. As you can see, there's a lot of options. And it can go as high as 2048-bit. SSTP encryption. You also can go at lower encryptions with PPTP as well as L2TP with this particular product. So just again another con good concept. Uh, the next slide was going to be looking at Tor and we'll look at the, the information before we go back to the slide. With Tor, this is another push for the idea of I want to surf the internet. I would like to not, I'd like to know that I'm not being going through any sort of surveillance. I want to know that I'm safe. Maybe you consider it paranoia, but maybe we have good reason sometimes for having these feelings about this. And the idea of Tor, free software and open network that helps you defend against traffic analysis and a form of network surveillance that threatens your personal freedom, privacy, confidentiality, and so on. 
and it comes in different forms. This is just uh, something that's, that's pretty interesting. I mean, you can go with the idea of USB. You can have your own Tor browser. They've even got some for the Android devices. So it's all about being anonymous. And maybe you feel that this is an important thing to have, and Tor has been around for that for quite a while. Now, looking back at the slides, I realized that Tor was designed to give you anonymous internet access. So a network of virtual tunnels allows people and groups to improve their privacy and secrecy on the internet. And of course, it enables software developers to create new communication tools with built-in privacy. And basically, a branch of the U.S. Navy actually used Tor for open source intelligence gathering. So it's got quite a bit of a history here. And realize that there are some advantages when you think about you know, you know, using these anonymous methods as well as you know encrypted tunnels. Remember, encrypted tunnel is an advantage for both the security conscious user and the malicious hacker. Users can protect themselves against malware and Trojans and man mill attacks better than they would without encrypted tunnels. Uh, and of course, at the same time, you feel some protection if you're using intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, and firewalls because anything that's encrypted is going to present a challenge for these products to even be able to make sense of them. So in this chapter, we've looked at basically covering tracks and realizing that a hacker would wish to try to cover their tracks. And what would they do? They could try to turn off with audit poll our auditing, maybe try to clear out our logs. That's why it's a good idea to, if you can, take your logs off your servers and copy them out to a syslog server so that there is basically a permanent record. So even if a hacker does erase some things on the compromised machine, the logs are still evident elsewhere. We can think from a hacker's perspective of hiding files, and they could use the built-in feature NTFS alternate data streams, assuming the hard drive is formatted with NTFS, which it should be if it's Windows these days. Steganography, I showed you some tools there, quite a few tools with a great deal of power to hide content. Maybe if someone wanted to hide the secret plans for the new iPhone. They could put them inside of a picture and send this innocent picture. It could be comical. It could be your new, you know, new pet you just purchased, new dog, new, new cat. And it looks pretty innocent. You could be sending secret messages about the new iPhone and all the technical specs on it, as, long, as well as shredding evidence, keeping yourself anonymous, and possibly using like the Tor browser.